Patrick, in trying to understand consciousness, we look for all different ways where we find consciousness. And one of the most obvious that we often overlook is sleep. It seems so common. What can we learn about sleep that will help us understand consciousness? Well, the first thing we learn about both consciousness and sleep by looking at sleep is that consciousness is very mysterious. Take REM sleep, for example. Everybody seems to know that that's where we have the most vivid dreams. What does REM mean? Rapid eye movement sleep. REM. REM. Dreams obviously are quite bizarre form of consciousness. So right away we know that any theory of consciousness is going to have to take account of the phenomenology of dreams if we're going to have a full theory of consciousness. So what is REM sleep? REM sleep, I think, is the most profound remaining mystery of biology right now, equal to the problem of consciousness, because look at its characteristics. It's bizarre. Every 90 minutes, we get paralyzed. We're asleep. We get par the body is paralyzed, but the brain is more activated during REM sleep than it is during the daytime. And we get sexually activated. Men get erections. The clitoris gets engorged in women. So you, you're, you're sexually activated, but your body's paralyzed. <laughs> your brain is like really buzzing. And we're forced to watch these things we call dreams. Why? You know, <laughs> it's bizarre. So let, let us really understand REM sleep. This, was, this is something that was just discovered. I mean, in the 1953. 1953. Wasn't Same year as uh, DNA was uh, so uncovered. Before then, no one had any idea that there were these unusual, powerful uh, episodes during sleep. Pretty much no. I mean, uh, you see references to the eyes moving under the eyelids, uh -huh. and people observing other people sleeping. Right, so during a night's sleep, say an eight-hour night's sleep, how many periods of Three rapid or four hour? REM episodes. And how long do they last? They get progressively longer over the space okay. of the night. So the first one might be five, ten minutes, but the last one could be as long as a half hour. Wow. Sometimes 45 minutes. Now, in addition to rapid eye movement, which is uh, something you could observe uh, uh, externally, but when you do e the brain waves, mm -hmm. EEG waves, what do you see? You see a lot of spikes on, on the EEG tracing. Which would look a little bit like somebody's just wide awake yeah, right. on the brain More itself. awake than when you're awake. <laughs> <laughs> so, yeah, you see, you see um, an e, uh, a desynchronized EEG, basically. Yes. Yeah. So, so the brain is quite active. And, of course, there's a form of consciousness when you're dreaming. But it's not well characterized because it's not like daytime consciousness. Mm -hmm. uh, you know, there's, people often comment that with, the difference with dreams is that there's, there seems to be a lack of um, self-criticism. You know, stuff that you would uh, know is quite bizarre during the daytime. You just take for granted during a dream. <laughs> Say, there's, there's no problem with me doing this. You know, I'm flying. No problem. <laughs> yeah. it's, it's fine. You know, yeah. so, but it is a form of consciousness that nobody has a good theory of. So we don't have a complete theory of consciousness without understanding dreams. Now, you know that REM sleep, the rapid eye movement sleep, is related to dreams because you can have someone in your laboratory mm -hmm. sleeping, and when you see the REM movement of their eyes, up. you wake them up and... They report a dream. They report a dream. Virtually all the time. There, now, there are some people, there, there are some uh, scientists who study dreams who say there's a very small percentage of the population who don't dream. That's not been demonstrated. Uh, and I, prob I, I think uh, that's probably not true. So we're, we're saying that virtually but everyone that, dreams. Yeah. If in, not in everyone. REM sleep, you, you wake somebody up during REM, they're going to report a dream. Now, most nights, I don't think I dreamt, but that's because I don't remember it. If those nights that I think I didn't dream, you would have woken me up during my REM sleep. And you would remember. I would remember a dream. Very likely. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Very likely. Yeah. But yeah, most of us don't pay that much of attention, attention to dreams and don't remember our dreams, most of us. But it's been demonstrated in study after study that if you wake somebody up during REM, you're going to get a report of dreams. So it's a reliable correlate of that very bizarre physiology I was talking about earlier. You know, highly activated brain, sexual activation, but body paralysis. Now, why would Mother Nature do that? <laughs> <laughs> you know, consider also when you're asleep, you're, you're subject to predation. 
So it's yeah. a highly vulnerable state. So whatever REM sleep is doing... Yeah, so words, if you're asleep in the jungle, uh, in our ancestors, uh, that's the time that you're most vulnerable. You can be attacked by an animal. You don't want to be lying down paralyzed right. if you got a lion after you. So what, what's fascinating is that during this time of hyperactivity, that in your dream you're flying or you're fighting or you're making love or something, mm -hmm. that your body is literally paralyzed, yeah. more paralyzed than at any other time. That's right. You uh, can't how, move. Yeah. <laughs> Why? <laughs> it's yeah. uh, nobody has any good theories about yeah. this. Yeah. In my estimation. Now, how about comparing uh, the state of dreams during REM mm -hmm. and the state of dreams during non-REM sleep? Do very, we, very different. Do we dream during non-REM? Yes, we do. Not as uh, not as much, it seems. Um, you wake somebody up in stage two sleep, it's known as, which is a uh, kind of light sleep. That's the form of sleep we spend most of our time in. Mm -hmm. Um, you, you, for the two thirds of the time, you get a, a dream report, but the dream reports, in my opinion, are very different than the dream reports you get in REM sleep. There's been a debate in the field about how different are non-REM dreams from REM dreams. Uh, I have done studies that have shown that, um, the thing that's most characteristic of REM dreams is aggression. The dreamer is involved in some sort of aggression. Mm. Whereas in stage two dreams, the, you, you, aggression levels go to zero most of the time. Not always, but they're very rare. Instances mm. of aggression are very rare. Mm. So that's, that's quite interesting. Huh? You, got, you got these two drastically different forms of sleep. One, you're, the brain is highly activated, but you're paralyzed. The other one, you're not paralyzed. The brain is activated. And it, the dreams from stage two are friendly. Banal sort of dreams. Everyday occurrences go on in mm. non-REM dreams. The dreams coming from REM sleep are bizarre, aggressive, dramatic, memorable, and, um, and you're paralyzed. fraught with emotion, and you're paralyzed. Yeah. I guess it's good to be paralyzed because if you're if sleeping, you can thrash around and do things that might hurt yourself. <laughs> <laughs> True, but why have the why have the dream in the first, first place? place? I mean, I mean uh, that's that's the standard exp explanation you get from yeah. people in the, in, the, in the dream science world. Why why are we paralyzed? With, well, so that you don't wake up and hurt yourself. Yeah. Okay, but why is Mother why is... Nature producing the problem in the first place? Yeah. Yeah. You know, and then she has to produce this inhibitory power to prevent you from hurting yeah. yourself. But what seems to be clear is that to really understand the state of uh, mammalian consciousness, certainly human consciousness, we can't leave this out. This is a critical part of it. Absolutely not. You can't leave it out. I mean, it's we spend a lot of time in REM sleep and it influences our behaviors. And it's there for a reason. We don't know why. There are no good theories. I mean, there are theories, but we don't know why. But I don't think you're going to have a complete theory of consciousness if you can't take into account dream phenomenology.